Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Now, if you're anything like the similar vintage to me and you happen to be Canadian, then you remember Mr. Dressup. And Mr. Dressup had a tickle trunk, which sounds disturbing, so I won't be calling my trunk of random parts a tickle trunk, but it was a place where he kept almost everything. And he could produce almost anything from it. And when it comes to PDP-11s, I'm starting to feel like I have a similar arrangement of parts in a tub. So let's go take a look and see what I can find in my tub of parts and whether or not we can make an entire PDP-11 mini computer on a workbench out of spare parts. All right, let's head on over to the museum section of the shop. Let's see. And we're looking for the tub of PDP-11 parts. We got back plans, serial boards, cages, all kinds of stuff. RAM boards, CPUs cash boards, floating point processors, a little bit of everything. Not very carefully stored either, but everything works. Well, with the exception of one network card, but that wasn't from this. So to build a PDP-11, what parts do we actually need? Well, first we need a backplane. That's gonna power everything, and it's gonna be the bus which allows the cards, like the CPU card and the memory card and the IO cards, to communicate with each other. So everything is built around a backplane. Next, we need a power supply in order to power the thing, and it needs to produce 12 volts and 5 volts. The PDP-11 also uses negative 12 volts, but you can just invert the 12 volt supply to get that at any car that needs it. Naturally, we need a CPU of some kind, and we need some memory as well. We have all those things, so let's see if we can make something. Okay, here we have the makings of a PDP-11 ready to go together. The fundamental parts are the back plane here, where the cards will slot into. This back plane is wired on the back side with the interconnects between each of the slots and it also has a connector for the uh, switch panel here which gives me my halt and run switch. It also has connections for the power inputs at the back which are going to be plus 5, plus 12 and ground. Apparently there is minus 12 on the bus but cards can make that just by inverting the 12. Next we have the CPU board itself. It has optional slots up top for a floating point unit, a memory management unit, and something else that I'm not sure what I'm missing. Also has some boot ROMs on here, and a connector for the console, and a second serial port. Next we have two 512K RAM boards, each one sporting half a megabyte, and together they'll give us one megabyte of memory. And finally we have the Cubone, which has an embedded Linux computer on a BeagleBone Black, and it allows it to present boot devices, such as images of hard drives, on the Unibus. To get started, we'll ensure nothing is powered, and we'll start with the CPU board. Next, RAM board. And the second RAM board. And the Cubone itself. Now the Cubone is a little tall, so I'm going to take a piece of cardboard and insert it between the Cubone and the next card up to make sure it doesn't make any contact. Next we'll take this small serial connector here and we'll connect that to the board. And we'll make sure our switches are all in the up position. At this point it should be as simple as plugging in the power and seeing what we get. But I'm going to want to plug in LAN to the Cubone here so that we can SSH into it. And with that, let's try powering it up. And as soon as we power up the PDP-11 boards, we'll see a memory test kick off underway. I apparently believe this is in the boot ROMs, and it should get us back to a boot step right away. But before we can boot anything, we need to mount a drive. And so we're gonna SSH into the Cubone itself, and we're gonna run a script called RT11 with some other parameters to mount a drive on device DU0. I'm going to reload the bootloader by typing in M space LL and pressing enter on that and then typing in power to reset the PDP-11. That will cause it to kick off its memory test again. It'll walk through all one megabyte of memory and it should bring us up to a boot prompt where we can pick a device. Sure enough, it does and we type boot DU0 and within a few seconds, if we're lucky, it will boot RT11. And there you go, RT11 running on a stack of boards in a backplane with a power supply. And all our devices should be present. There you go, we can see DU0 is resident. And if I do a directory of DU0, I should see all of the drive contents in the drive that we mounted as a virtual image. And sure enough, all the files seem to be present. And our listing should show some 209 files, it looks like. 
6,442 blocks with 59,000 blocks free in the image. And so, there you have it, a complete PDP-11 built from spare parts. And if you're curious, this will be in a PDP-11 23 Plus, I believe. I'm using an M8189 CPU card, which is the KD11F, I believe. I'm not entirely sure. It's the LSI, but not the VLSI package of it yet. Either way, it runs, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. This little chair will be waiting for one of you, and a rocking chair for another who likes to rock, and a big armchair for two more to curl up in. All next time on Dave's Garage.